Hello, so I am very excited to be back here as he's speaking. Super glad to have you in like and share videos and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. And for all our returning subscribers, we say thank you very much for being there always and we can't really thank you enough. Uh, thanks for the support all the time. So today we shall be looking at uh, the profession of medical laboratory science or medical laboratory technologist, uh, looking at options of how you can migrate to Canada, especially for those that want to migrate to Canada using our uh, express entry. So the various options actually for the express entry uh, are the Canadian experience class, which is the CEC, and that is for those that are already in Canada. The Federal Skilled Worker uh, Program, which is called the FSWP, and that is actually for those that are still based outside of Canada, want to migrate to Canada as skilled workers, so you would be looking at the FSWP. Uh, the Federal Skilled Trade Program does not necessarily apply to medical laboratory scientists or technologists. So in terms of the NOC, which is called the National Occupation uh, Classification, NOC, so you want to look at the various tests, uh, TER, so you would be looking at where the medical laboratory technologies are fall under, and that is the TER 2. And these are occupations that usually would require college diploma or apprenticeship or training of two years or more, or supervisory occupations as the case may be. But however, medical laboratory technologies belong in the TER 2. So, and the NOC for um, medical laboratory technologies are 3212 mm -hmm. duties that they do carry out, as well as the major requirements for you to be able to practice in Canada, which includes all the employment requirements, uh, such as the registration with the body where you're looking to practice in the province of choice and uh, the certification with the Canadian Society for Medical Laboratory Science, which is usually required by all employers. Our medical laboratory technology in terms of the job opportunities that we got over the next three years, uh, most of the provinces are looking good, except for two, which are Ontario and Saskatchewan, which are really very good on a five over five. So I want to check that out as well. So the first biggest opportunity that you can actually have to migrate to Canada as MLT or as MLS is for you to look at what is called a category-based selection, which is one of the opportunities that you can really get to move to Canada as quickly as possible. And that is for the healthcare occupations, which medical laboratory technologies, one of those that are nominating to move to Canada. So in terms of the ministerial instructions, respecting invitations to apply for permanent residency under the expert entry system. The last one I had for healthcare occupations, uh, we had a whooping 3,000 invitations uh, issued in November, and that was 20th of November 2024, with the lowest CRS score being 463, which is slightly lower than what it would be the general uh, nomination. So in terms of the CRS score, which is a comprehensive ranking system, CRS criteria, so you can see all the factors that will count towards you having uh, your scores on the scale of 600. And these are the core human capital factors or spouse common law partner factors, skill transferability, as well as uh, additional other points that you would be able to obtain from say maybe you've got someone in Canada that is related to you. So you can see how it applies uh, age, level of education, language proficiency, and the work experience depending on your marital status. I can check the point break then right here and see how all of those apply to you individually. So the province where the biggest opportunity lies right now is Ontario with the Ontario Immigrant Nominee Program, the OINP. And that is where you should be looking at uh, first and foremost if you're looking to migrate to Canada right now. So looking at the express entry uh, human capital priority stream for Ontario, you would see that they've got the health occupations, which plenty of opportunities like here. And the NOCs that they're interested in, one of those would be the medical laboratory uh, technologies, as you can see right here. So it is one of the occupations in demand in 
Ontario so you want to look at that as soon as possible and see what are the eligibility criteria and all the requirements that you need to have in place and get on board with Ontario otherwise you want to be looking at our British Columbia with their health care programs and priority health care occupations under the BC PNP so they got plenty of opportunities right here as well with occupations uh, plenty with the medical laboratory technologists also being one of those three two one two zero and um, the other thing is that in BC, there is also the Help March BC. We are working for the government of British Columbia in terms of helping to recruit people in the healthcare sector. And now, uh, apart from that, you can find some of the jobs in the Find a Job uh, column on the Help March BC and see what opportunities are available, particularly the ones that are permanent, particularly for those that are certification ready to go. The Help March BC have also announced that the, the province of British Columbia is working to bring together healthcare recruitment services under a new name which is called the bclcareers.ca. So you want to look at this bclcareers.ca website and see what's new there as well as the various opportunities that they've got in all the different health authorities ranging from the provincial health to the First Nations, uh, Providence, Northern, Interior, Vancouver, Coastal, Highland, Fraser Health, and the rest of them. So just check those out and see what exactly you're able to get out of. Over to Saskatchewan, where we have the International Skilled Worker Occupation in Demand and opportunity to move to Canada as a permanent resident. So if your occupation does not fall within this excluded occupation list, then you're good. And uh, medical laboratory technologist is not one of those. So it means that you would be good to go in Saskatchewan. So check out the details as well as the new talent pathway also launched and which is uh, together with the agriculture sector where they're having various opportunities for healthcare workers who have a um, job offer for skilled work in Saskatchewan and also meet criteria for subcategory for healthcare pathway. And for those who are intending to reside in uh, Saskatchewan province as permanent resident. Uh, another option would be Manitoba with their in-demand occupations where uh, they've got the ones for health occupations which they uh, prioritize the occupations listed right here including the medical laboratory technologies. Check the requirements for what exactly they will be needing you to provide for you to be qualified to move to Manitoba. Save that you can move on to the Atlantic Immigration Program, which is called the AIP, which is the very robust program as a pathway for people who want to move up permanently as skilled foreign workers or international graduates from our Canadian institutions who want to work and live in one of the four Canadian Atlantic provinces, which include in New Brunswick, or Nova Scotia, Prince Edward Island, and Newfoundland and Labrador. All the details are right here. Check them out and see what exactly applies to you and see all the step-by-step -step guide for the AIP candidates. So in terms of the jobs available, so you can check them out on jobbank.gc.ca and see the various job opportunities that are available for medical laboratory technologists in Canada. Because the job really can't towards the movement on the AIP because one of the Criteria for moving is getting a job offer, which says you have to contact the employer to get a job offer. That meets the program requirements that you're looking to apply to. For other provinces, uh, including Alberta, Quebec, Yukon, and the other territories in Canada, they're not necessarily very favorable at this point in time for medical laboratory technologies. So the dedicated healthcare pathway in Alberta for healthcare workers does not specify medical laboratory technologies as one of as one of the occupations that they're looking to get into the program because all the eligible healthcare professionals under this dedicated healthcare pathway include physicians or registered nurses, um, physician assistant, psychologist, social worker, physiotherapist, and so on. Not necessarily medical laboratory technologists. But for those that are also looking at the, the process for getting certified in Canada, so you would have to do that with the Canadian Society for Medical Laboratory Science, which is called the CSMLS. So you would have to look at the part that talks about the internationally educated medical laboratory technologist, which is the IEMLT. And you can check out the steps that you need to take in terms of becoming certified in Canada, which starts with you having uh, what is called a prior learning assessment, the PLA, 
Uh, you can download the PLA uh, prior and assessment handbook to see exactly all the details of what step-by-step -step that you need to take in uh, nitty-gritty of everything so you can get all of that there. So after the PLA assessment, you would be considered eligible to challenge the exam if your uh, prior knowledge or study as well as your experience is found to be equal to that of anyone that has studied in Canada as well. If you're eligible to challenge the exam and you pass the exam, then it means you would be eligible to register to become a member of the particular province that you're looking to practice uh, your MLT. Otherwise, if you're not eligible to challenge the exam, then it would mean that you would have to complete a learning plan and there will be some uh, courses that you would have to take uh, in order for you to uh, become eligible to challenge the exam and move on to the next stage. So in terms of the PLA, you can check the details right here on this uh, page uh, see what exactly you need to do. Um, for all the information regarding the internationally educated MLTs, the amount for the uh, PLA process itself, then the stages as you start from the pre-assessment to assessment to post-assessment, you can check out all of that there and all the steps that you need to follow starting from reading the PLA handbook. So like I said, you can download the PLA handbook from here, which says you read the PLA handbook. And um, following that, you have to go to step two, which is completing the PCRB, which is the Personal Competency Reading Booklet. And um, after that, and that is for the one specific for MLTs, your step three would be to complete the OSA, which is the Online Self-Assessment, which is called the OSA for General MLTs. And um, afterwards, you would have um, the opportunity to submit uh, your application with all the supporting documents. Uh, if you register as a member of the CSMLS, so this would be the amount applied to you. Otherwise, as non-members, it would be a different amount. And also exam eligibility, check out the information on exam eligibility and um, all the information would be right here. And in terms of the structure, so for MLT exam, the structure of the exam is also stated here, which says it is a three hour half exam. And it is uh, 210 questions, which are multiple choice, as well as those that may include uh, some images, but not necessarily any case studies. And in terms of the dates of, for the exam, one happening in February, the other in June, as well as in October. So there are three exams in each year. And uh, the applicable fee for members and not members, as well as residents and non-residents of Canada are equally stated right there. Check them all out. Uh, in terms of some updates, so by November 2025, all internationally educated MLTs and non-traditional educated applicants will be required to apply through the CAMPA, which is the CAMLPR flexible pathway website, which CAMPA will, will conduct the prior learning assessments using their competency profiles. And applicants will need to complete the CAMPA flexible pathway assessment slash exams moving forward from November 1st, 2025. So March 1st, 2026, all applicants, including those educated domestically or internationally, will be required to apply through the CAMPA flexible pathway and complete associated assessment and exams moving forward from March 2026. So if there are things that you're still looking at that are not really very clear and you're still looking at um, unanswered questions, so you can look at the PLA Frequently asked questions and maybe some of your questions are answered there. Otherwise, you can just email over the CSMLA and they would be able to help you with whatever queries or inquiries that you do have. So thanks very much. And that brings us to the end of today's review of the various opportunities to uh, move to Canada as a medical laboratory scientist or technologist, as the case may be. Uh, thanks very much for your rapt attention. And I'll be catching you some other time again in another video. And it is Sahid signing out and seeing you some other time again. Thank you and bye-bye.